all right what's going on guys so today we're going to be going over the importance of shooting at least a 10 round group uh usually you'll see a lot online people will shoot like a a three round group or they'll shoot a five round group or they'll kind of you know pick and choose and call like oh that was a flyer my group should be sub in white blah 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 today uh we're gonna try to win the trigger again y'all know the trigger can't be giving me problems but it's on there for all you people that might be like oh he pulled a shot you're gonna see hopefully everything that i'm doing <clears throat> um really this applies to gas guns uh also brought a laser thermometer so we can tempt the barrel uh, no rounds have been shot yet i'm gonna confirm zero because i put the thunder beast on here see if my zero shifted from the rc2 but other than that yeah we're just gonna see why shooting more than a three round group on a gas gun is important and why you should be shooting at least 10 because these things heat up quick and as you should know more heat your group opens up so get to it all right but before we get into the shooting let's go over the build because i know someone's gonna ask it's a thunder beast 30 cal magnus sr in the rally 8000 colorway uh surefire turbo t-rex light bar cobalt kinetics receiver set down defense barrel don't really care about politics it's a good barrel um attacker 416 with the mill xt reticle Hollow Sun 509T with the 34 millimeter Brazilian mount. Uh, trigger cam. Maybe it fucking records this time. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Um, Geisley. Geisley SSAE X trigger. My favorite trigger. Uh, I've tried out a bunch of different ones. I didn't really like the Geisley matched curve one or whatever. B5 grip with the palm swell. Macbull CTR, Arasaka limb saver, Arasaka bag rider. Um, but the important thing is the ammo. So we're gonna be shooting your standard 55 grain bowl. Probably the ammo that everyone has a million rounds in stock, or you should have a bunch of this in stock. 62 grain green tip. Uh, 77 grain IMI. This is what I compete with. And 77 grain black arc. Just because it is fucking zooming. So, yeah. Between each uh, magazine iteration, I'm going to let the barrel cool down. And like I showed y'all, I brought the laser thermometer or whatever the hell it's called so yeah we're gonna try not heat the barrel up too much in between different ammo types to keep it as consistent as possible um, and we're shooting off of a armageddon gear x-wing um, with a suppressor burn on it just because why not so yeah we're gonna see how this shoots um, i've never shot this thunder beast on this gas gun you usually shoot it on my bolt gun oh and it has the harris bipod the harry 49 adapter with the harry 49 parker rail on the bottom and yeah <clears throat> down range we have two targets at 100 yards excuse me the target on the left is what i'm going to confirm zero on the target on the right is where we're going to do all of our uh, our data testing. So yeah, let's get to shoot. Okay. First, we're gonna start with ball ammo, just cause match ammo costs more money. Get your cam up. Hopefully, it's up. And I got the got the night force on 13 power just to give y'all a better picture without me being magged up crazy crazy high. Usually I do not shoot this this high. 
but here we go. First round through the Magnus. Oh, let me get the chrono up. Got the chrono up just to compare, compare data from the RC2 to the Magnus. Pray to the NFA gods who don't get a fucking battle strike. And yeah, I'm kidding. like we are yeah, this is ball ammo I know point two four six to the right like point two low but let's just keep going I think that's at least enough. We're, we're on paper. Uh, so I'm going to save the rest of the rounds to give the 55 grain its actual 10 round group. Um, not going to mess with the scope. I'm just going to hold on each square on the. I think my trigger cam just died. I don't know. It beat. Um, but yeah, we're just going to move on to the 77 grain ammos and the 62 grain. Or, we're gonna move on to the the ten round group comparison. I'm um, gonna attempt the barrel, and yeah, let's get this party rolling. So after five rounds of fifty five grain up to 74 degrees so I'm not gonna really wait because the baseline was 72 I believe it was 72 um, so yeah we're just gonna roll right into it and the suppressor the suppressor is at 125 at a max Cooling down now pretty rapidly now to 112. So 125 max with suppressor after five rounds. Uh, so yeah, we're just gonna go into the 10 round group on the right target. So I'm totally unsure if this trigger cam is even still recording, but as y'all have seen, I haven't touched it. So if it is, I'll just chop it up and splice it in. If not, I'm probably never gonna use this thing again. So here we go. And we saw over there on this left target, the 55 grain was like 0.2 low. Maybe like 0.4 low and like 0.7 to the right. I'm not gonna hold that. We're just gonna aim at a different block. So here we go, 10 rounds.
So, I don't know what the trigger cam is doing. It just made the noise that it turned itself off. So, we're just gonna roll with it. Sorry for the inconvenience, guys. I I bought this so y'all could see what I'm doing. And I guess I'll just send it back again to trigger cam and try and get a new one. But if you're in, side note, if you're in the market for a trigger cam, um, for training purposes. This is my second one. This was the warranty one that I got back. And as y'all can see, if you follow me on Instagram at big.spurge, uh, I haven't been putting up true cam content because this thing has been extremely inconsistent. It'll just stop recording and turn off or yeah, that's, that's really, I, I could charge it all day long and it'll die like as soon as as soon as I take it off the charger. And I baby this thing, especially since this is my warranty one. My first one, I babied the hell out of that one too. It, it just shit the bed, I guess. But this one, especially being the warranty model that I got back from Trigger Cam, I, I cannot recommend this. Um, Jimmy has good luck with them. I know Possum Puncher uses them. Um, Phil Vallejo uses them. For me, this thing is 0 for 2. And for the thing, for the price that this thing costs, this thing should be a tank. It should not be doing this. So anyway, back to the back to the shooting. Um, do some narration in case this trigger cam went down. Let's see. I'm gonna mag up. Group is to the lowest shot is there. Group is about 1.3 mils tall, and point I call that 0.3 wide. So pretty tight group, I guess. No, I'm not starting this up. But man, fuck technology. Everything is falling apart. So now we're just gonna walk down to the 100 yard target. Clear this rifle out so the RSO is not fucking shit the bed. That's clear. Now I'm tipping the barrel. I know it's been a second, but. Yeah. On this next round, I'll try to be faster with the temp. Barrel is at 84.7, 85, so 85 degrees. Suppressor is at 154, 156, 158. Okay. Suppressor is 158, barrel is 84. Now we're just gonna walk down range. Walking down range to the target. Uh, I think this is something that everybody should be doing. You see, like, yeah, I always say it. People will ask me what barrels or what ammos, you know, they record or yeah, this is something that you can do for yourself. People always ask me what ammo do I recommend and this, that, and the third, and I'm happy to answer it. But as I hope this video will illustrate to y'all as we move forward, your barrel is gonna react differently with your ammo type so you gotta test this stuff for yourself <clears throat> your boy's out of shape but yeah here we go up at the target all right guys so here we are up at the target um i didn't see this one looking through the scope but here's 10 rounds one two three four five six seven one two three four five six seven eight nine 10 rounds, um, it's 55 grand. Uh, point of aim was here, I believe, and it hit here because we knew off of that chart. Um, and just for reference, this is, this white square is a quarter MOA. The gray square is supposed to be gray. My printer needs ink. This inner square is one MOA. This black square is 1.5 MOA. So 
yeah on to 62 grain barrel should be cooled off by now barrel is cooled back down to 72 degrees suppressor is at 94 we're gonna send it <coughs> loading up 62 grain green tip sugar cam says it's still rolling but I do not trust it sorry if I'm dragging the bike on the ground for the audio people going hot as far on the left target just make sure we're still on paper Cool, that's like point three low. <clears throat> Going over to the right target for data collection. We're gonna hold on the center, top center target. There we go, 10 rounds. Kind of starting to get lost in the sauce. Oh. Barrel's at 109. Suppressor is at 180. So we're gonna wait a little bit. Let this thing cool down. Clear this out. Ooh. That ain't good. I forgot to restart the chrono, but SDs are gonna be all over the place. But it's all good. Okay, so we're up at the target now. Um, had to go back and look at the other video. Got all these dots. This, these are all 55 grain with the black. So we got one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right here, right on top of the other one. So nine, ten. On these, I don't have my paint marker. So on these, I'm just going to do a horizontal line. So one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, that's about what you'd expect for 62 grain. I mean, if we just adjust it in the reticle, you know, like up 0.2 or 0.3, left like 0 0.4, 0 0.5, then 
that'd be about the size group that you'd normally see anyways out of that type of ammo same for the 55 brand so but again that's what what i'm trying to illustrate is let's say we only did three rounds one two three that's like that's a sub MOA group right there i guarantee there's somebody on instagram saying their barrel shoots sub moa with 62 grain for the same thing with 55 grain but this is why and here another example this is why you need to shoot more rounds so anyway now on to 77 grain i am a random sidebar this is the range that i have access to now uh, down here in Georgia in the sticks, as you see, there's a fuck ton of trees. So having the yardage that I did in North Carolina isn't really a thing. It's like in my own property. Um, firing line is over here. So from there to here is 100 yards. From here to those targets is another, I want to say that's 250 right there. And then I'm not sure if the camera picks it up, but there's a trail right here in the middle. It goes back to a 350, but that's really it. So I'm going to have to buy my own targets. Some little itty bitty steel ones like Ken Dang does. Shout out Ken Dang. And yeah, just make it happen because uh, I guess my wind calls aren't going to get any better because shooting inside of 300 yards really isn't a thing i don't know i don't know what my next step is going to be um competing wise just because i have nowhere to true data i have nowhere to practice in the wind but more to follow i'm at least gonna keep doing educational stuff like this because i love seeing new shooters come into the sport and people need this kind of information rather than your favorite YouTuber telling you what you need to be buying and how the PSA Jackal is the best gun to ever fucking get produced. <clears throat> also, too, I'm sure you can see it on the video when the phone is on the tripod. But for all the ejection port perfectionists and nerds, um, so if standing perfectly in line three o'clock with the rifle. All of my brass is right here at about the four o'clock position, four, uh, 334. So, can's not over, guys, compared to the RC2. But uh, yeah. Yeah, we're going to shoot one round on the left just to make sure we're on paper. And then we're going to go to the right, the right target to collect the data on the 10 round group. Barrel is now at 77. Suppressor is at 92. So I think it's safe to shoot. So here we go. One round on the left. No call. I'll shoot one more somewhere else. Okay, sick. <clears throat> so here we go. Also, too, just something to note. Uh, so we've all heard the myth or not myth because it, it is true the suppressors add fps i'll have to compare against my rc2 data but this might be faster i don't want to say it is or it isn't until you know i actually know but that's the reason why i put the chrono on here 
was to just compare the Magnus additional additional FPS because the can is bigger. It's going to trap more volume of gas compared to the RC2, and it weighs the same. So more suppression, potentially more FPS for like an inch and a half or two inches extra at the end. So yeah, anyway, getting into the 10 round group. So this target, we're gonna hold top right. Those all felt good. Um, just looking through the scope, I think that the additional length of the Magnus is obviously changing the, the point of aim. And like we saw in the beginning of the video, we didn't, you know, we didn't adjust anything on the scope. We just got on paper, held the same hold, and fired 10 rounds. So I think this is all consistent. But yeah, now we're just gonna go down range and look at the group size. Also something to note, the rounds on the top. Uh, Y'all know me, I'm gonna be as unbiased as possible. The rounds are visibly, visibly more dirty than the RC2. I know that's probably casting a shadow. I'll make sure to get some B-roll of this for y'all, but these rounds on the top, they are visibly more dirty than the RC2. But as weird as that sounds, the gas to the face is less. So I don't know whatever Pew Science, you know, suppressor magic is going on there, but all the gas is, I guess, dumping into the mag well or into the magazine and not through the charging handle opening here. But yeah, just something to note, more data for y'all. Yeah, uh, fuck. Sorry dudes, did it again. Barrel 116. Uh, suppressor 156 is the max. But the wind's picking up, so it's pulling it down rapidly. So, walking down range after shooting the 77 grain IMI. Uh, this round has been pretty consistent out of my barrel. Uh, just looking through the optic, the group looked consistent with the group sizes that I've gotten with the RC2 attached to it so I'm not really too worried I'm not worried what the results are regardless because the whole point of this video <coughs> excuse me is to show you that your barrel needs to heat up so you can see what your excuse me what your barrel is actually capable of shooting a three round group shows you nothing yeah you might look cool on Instagram but If you're, if you're rocking a gas gun, shooting three round groups, five round groups, cut that shit out. Dump 10 rounds in here, be a man. Okay, so here, here we are, excuse me guys, up at the target. Um, my knees in the dirt. Here we are up at the target. We are 55 grain, 62 grain, here. 
got our 779 mark. Um, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Not sure where rounds nine and ten went. Um, oh, maybe these are it. Nine. Maybe those are nine, ten. Maybe y'all can hear. Maybe the wind pushed this. I'm not trying to sure coat whatever happened. These are resorts we got. If the trigger cam is up. You'll see these all felt like clean breaks. Um, I don't see any other unmarked uh, impacts over here. So we're gonna call that. <laughs> Those are results we got for the IMI. Unbiased. So back at the firing line. Now we're gonna shoot the round that everyone loves to hate. But I just like to shoot because it moves really quick. Um, 77 grain black arc. NAS3, it's like a 262 clone, but this shit moves. Um, Chrono is out of reach, so I'm not gonna reset it. I'll just throw up a screenshot of the 10 rounds that this speed goes. Last speed of the IMI was 2668.1. So, yeah. Black Arc Munitions, 77 grain. Super speeders. <laughs> and I'll tempt the barrel on time this time. Right here. I got you guys. Here we go. One round on the left to see where we're at. No call, one more. Just make sure we're on the paper. I'm gonna fire in between two targets. Okay. Looks like low right, but 2842 for 77 grade, so. Here goes 10 rounds on. I'm gonna shoot the left target or should I shoot the right target? I'm gonna shoot the left target just because, nope, I can't. There's no unmarked targets. Marked target, sorry. So I'll just shoot the, the right target. Um, where to aim? Oh, it doesn't matter. They're all they're all marked. Sorry, my brain's malfunctioning, guys. But here we go. Shot that kind of fast, but the weapon was cycling good. Had good bag placement, good bag grip. So it was like half a mil jumping. Um, last shot, 2842.4. Average SD and ES is all, beep, all messed up. Um, but yeah, let's cool this out. 
tempt this bad boy. Barrel. Weird. Suppressor. Where's my laser? Suppressor is at 135.5. 140, 167. So I guess because I shot that so fast, suppressor is at 190.4. I don't know if y'all can see that. And the barrel, barrel is at 88.3. Don't know how that works. More suppressor magic. Yeah. Four rounds. Not safe. I don't know what the trigger cam was doing. I have no clue. No clue. Y'all just saw me push the button. It just started. I don't. Fuck that thing, dude. Alrighty. So we are. Walking down range to the last 10 round group, which is the Black Arc Munitions 77 grain NAS3 Mark 262 clone. I like to shoot that round because if you saw my other video, it enables shorter barreled rifles to get longer barrel speeds. Sorry about that, the wind is kicking. Um, and but yeah i like to shoot that round because it, it enables shorter barrel excuse me shorter barrel rifles to get 16 inch or longer speeds um, from the people that i know that have shot the black arc 77 grain they're not the barrel doesn't always like it but I mean, I'm looking at the group right now. So this is the last group. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Missing one. Did I shoot two? I think I did. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, that's two, nine. Focus. Is that two holes? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I don't know. I guess there's fucking nine rounds there. There's nothing on the bottom. Nothing different on the right. Maybe that is two holes. It's it's hard to tell, to be honest. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I don't know, guys. But data as unbiased as it comes. So we're going to take these targets down, pop them on the caliper, measure them all as best we can. We got all of the barrel temperature data. We got somebody else can shoot that. I'm not taking that out. So what did we do today? We shot four different types of ammo, each with 10 round groups to see how those group sizes vary and how barrel temperature affects your group size. Um, you know, the more you become familiar with your system, then sure, maybe you, you can afford, or maybe you just know that if you shoot a five round group, a 10 round group will look like X. But I wanted to illustrate what a 10 round group looks like consistently. So as we saw with the, the groups that we shot down range, there were no sub MOA groups. They were all 1.5 or bigger. The more uh, temperature that's introduced into your barrel, the bigger that group's gonna get. Now that leads us to another question. Will a thicker profile barrel shrink your group sizes? Absolutely it will. 
This is just a government profile barrel. It's a down defense barrel. <clears throat> so you could get a bull barrel or a straight barrel or an SPR profile barrel, whatever you want to do. But you need to be the one shooting that group. So I know out of this 16 inch government profile barrel, as my barrel starts to heat, starts to heat up, sorry, I know 1.5 like 1.1 1, 1 to 1.5 is as good as it's going to get. So I don't need I don't need to chase a sub MOA group if I'm shooting a 10 round group because I know it's just not going to happen. <clears throat> but that also leads into shooting competitions. Let's say you're shooting at a QP match and then there's a stage with unlimited round count. The more you shoot the bigger your group's gonna get. So even if you do everything right, you still might miss. That's also something to keep in mind. I hope this microphone is working for the wind. I bought it for y'all. <laughs> I, I have no idea if it's working or not. So yeah, I guess we'll see when I edit this video. <clears throat> but yeah, thanks for stopping by my channel. Um, Thanks for even considering my opinion when it comes to firearms. I'm just a dude that is very passionate about teaching others and I love firearms. Uh, but yeah, get out, shoot your own groups, document your own stuff, save your targets. I usually never throw my targets away. I just put them in a binder. But yeah, thank you. dad advice for this video um be a good fucking person don't judge people solely based off their appearance don't be quick to judge somebody so quick based off the kit that they're running maybe that's all they can afford everyone seems to be so fast to forget where they came from uh i remember definitely not bragging about myself whatsoever like i'm probably the most humble dude you'll ever meet if we ever meet i hope we do but i remember when i used to think i was like i'll never own a two thousand dollar ar i'll never own a, a night force attacker all like that expensive stuff so I, I would i would skimp and i would i used to have a monstrum tactical scope on my first gun my first gun was an anderson and look at me now, not bragging, but we all start somewhere. And it seems to be that humans in general, not even firearms people, they're so quick to forget where they came from that they begin infighting. Like, let's just don't fucking forget where you come from. <sighs> like, subscribe. Somebody's pulling up. I'm not trying to get looked at weird. So, like, subscribe, share this video with. Whoever you think it may help or whoever you know shoots three round groups and see you on the next one.